Number 10 then from the 2018 SQA Advanced Higher Mathematics of Mechanics. Seven mark question here for centre of mass. A uniform circular lamina with a diameter AB of 8, which is probably noted at the side, centimetres, as a centre C and mass per unit area M. Now effectively that M is going to make no difference in the question if it's a uniform lamina. Because if you've got a uniform shape like that, where the density is the same, where the thickness is the same at each point, and the density is the same at each point, then all three measures of centeredness, if you like, will be the same. You've got the centroid, which is like the centre of the area. You've got the centre of mass, which is where it's the single point where all the mass can be considered to act as a single point. And you've got the centre of gravity, which is the single point where the force of gravity would act. Well, if there's no gravity involved, then there'll be no centre of gravity. But there'll be a centre of mass, there'll be a centroid, and if it's uniform, then those two will be at exactly the same position. Anyway, two holes have been made in the lamina, as shown here. It's a strangely disturbing little picture. It's reminiscent of Stewie, I think. A circular hole of radius 1, so this radius here, oh, that makes it even look more like it, of radius 1, and a semicircular hole that goes from B to C, so that must be of length 4. So this one's radius must be 2. Find the position of the centre of mass of the lamina relative to point A. Well, if it weren't for those two holes, the centre of mass would be bang in the centre if it's a uniform lamina. What will happen with these two holes is, the contributions that they would have made towards the centre of mass have been removed. So effectively, you just need to work out the positions of the centres of mass of the three of these and combine them appropriately. You could draw that diagram again like this. Here's the line AB to begin with. The circle could be considered as a point mass here at point C. This circle here, now this is a radius 1 and it's halfway along, could be considered as a point mass here. Now, what would be the position of that point mass? Now, it all depends where you want to take your moments about. The question says, find the position of the resultant centroid, no, nope, resultant central mass, relative to A. It'd actually be better taking it relative to C because that would knock out one of the calculations. But it'd only be one little calculation, so I'll just stick with A. So if I'm going to take moments about A, then these are the two axes I'm going to spin them about. I'm going to call that my x-axis and y-axis. So this point here, I'll put its coordinates down relative to A then, would be 4, 0. The small circle must be bang in the middle of the circle. It's halfway along, so that's a 2, and its radius was 1. So that's a mass, a point mass centred here. Now the last one's a bit trickier for the semicircle, but you can look up the front. Obviously it's symmetrical this way, and its centroid is about here. So I'll just pop that in here somewhere. So it'll be four and two is six along from A, but that vertical distance, you'll find a formula at the front for that vertical distance, it's four R upon three pi. So if the radius is 2, that's going to be 8 upon 3 pi. Now, those two point masses actually aren't there. You're only calculating their effects, so you can subtract them from the overall calculation to remove their contributions. So the way you're going to work out is this. If you rotate it, probably better rotate it about the y-axis first of all. That means imagine you've got these three masses swinging around the y-axis. What are the combined moments of them, mass times distance, so that it has the same result as a single point in a certain position? Well, the first thing I have to do is set out all the data. What have we got for the three shapes? So the three shapes are the... Those are the three shapes you've got. So for each of them you want their mass and then the coordinates of their centres. So for the large circle, that's just a big circle, its area is going to be pi r squared, and its radius is 4, so it's pi times 4 squared. 
which is 16 pi, and its centre is at 4, 0 if we're taking it relative to A. The small circle will be pi times 1 squared, so that's just pi, and its centre is at 2, 1. This one is a semicircle, so it'll be a half pi times its radius is 2, which is 2 pi, and its centre was at 6, 8 upon 3 pi. Now, the first two marks are for identifying these quantities. They actually want, rather than the areas, they want the masses, but that just means you have to keep writing in m times this, 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 and then the m's in the end will just cancel out. It does say do not penalise the omission of mass. Oh, just put it in. Bit of a pain, really. So, m, m, m. So what we've got is mass of the particular part and position. Now what it does is you get two marks for the circular parts are worth one mark, and the semicircle part is worth a mark on its own, just because of that little added complication of finding its own centre of mass, and maybe also because of the wee half. But now you just take the contributions. So let's find the moments about the y-axis. If you take moments about the y-axis, imagine these little things are swinging around, then you want the distance times the mass for each of those. What effect have they got? Remembering these two are negative. So just taking the same order here, the large circle was 16. What I'm going to do here, I'm just going to take the m right out of it because it belongs to them all, was 16 pi times 4. A mass of 16 pi m times 4. This one has got a mass of just pi. Remember, this has been subtracted. You're removing this contribution. Pi times 2. And this one has got a mass of, and again, it's being subtracted, 2 pi times 6. Now that's the effect of those about the y-axis. What single point mass, that'll be the centre of mass, have the same effect? Well, you'll need the total area. I should have just left myself a little bit more room here when I was adding it up, or rather the total mass. There we go. So that's going to be, remember, those are being subtracted. So that's going to be a 13 pi for the mass of this resultant lamina. So that'll be 13, oh, m times 13 pi times, but I don't know what that distance is. So that's the x bar. Now, that's worth a mark. Now, it's just a case of working that out. Well, obviously, first thing is the m's will go with a uniform lamina. They didn't need to be there in the first place. The other thing is they've all got pi with no other terms and in, not involving pi, so the pi's can go as well. So it's just a case of multiplying these out. You're going to have, I'll just rewrite it as 13x bar will equal, and you've got 64. Take away 12 and 2 is 14, which is 50. So x bar is going to be 50 divided by 13. And that gives you 3.846. We'll round it off to That's worth a mark. Now, what if you look at moments about the x-axis? What's the if twisting effect about the x-axis? Well, it's only these two that are going to do anything. And remember, they're negatives. Because they're not meant to be there. We're finding their twisting effect and removing them because they're not there anymore. There'll be no effect in this one. So again, m times, because it's going to go. Now, this time, for this one, the distance is 1 from the x-axis for the small circle, so I'll just be pi times 1, and that's a minus. This one, 2 pi, so that's 2 pi, but its distance was this 8 upon 3 pi. And what twisting effect would there be if they were replaced by a single mass, which will be the centre of mass? Well. Its mass would be m times 13 pi, and its distance from that x-axis would be y bar. Again, those m's will go, but the pi's won't, because there's a term there without pi. So I'm going to have 13 pi equals negative pi minus, and that'll be 16 upon 3. 
So y bar will be this divided by that. I don't think I need to show it. There's only one mark for getting this answer. And when you press the buttons, you get negative 0 0.20751, so 208. Now, since it asked for its position relative to A, those would be the answers, so I shouldn't really need to say any more. And what we got, that was a mark for taking the moments about the x-axis to find the, the y components. Those would be, that would be the final answer overall, but still relative to A there then, so I'll put this. Centre of mass is 3.846 right and 0 0.208 down from A. Probably don't need to write that down. There's the last mark. Now, if you take moments about C instead, you'd have removed one of the calculations in this part. You wouldn't have had to bother with the 64. But then at the end, you'd have had to translate that distance back to A. So there's not much to be gained, really. It was just one little calculation. Part B then. The lamina is freely suspended from the point A. Calculate the angle that the line AB makes with the downward vertical. Well, if that was it, suspend or held in position with AB vertical, the centre of mass, which was 3.8 along and 0.2 down, would be off centre. If the resultant mass is, this, is at this point here, which is off the line, there'll be a resultant moment which will turn it onto this line. So the original shape would have to swing slightly to the side. So the centre of mass lies here. So like this, it would swing round so that the diameter goes off centre, leaving the centre of mass on the vertical line. And of course, you know the position of that relative to A, because on the original diameter AB, it was 3.8 along, and then perpendicularly, 2 0 0.28 down. So I know this little triangle. That was 3.846, and that was 0 0.208. So you can work out this angle. Those two sides make the tangent. So this angle is going to be the inverse tan of 0 0.208 divided by 3.846. So you pop that in your calculator and you get, not a very big deflection, 3.095 etc. And this is degrees. So the deflection, 3.1 degrees. It's only the one mark. There it is.